Thank you very much for inviting me today and a, a huge congratulations on uh, 80 years of your important work. I'm very happy, very happy to be with you this evening. It's an, always an honor to engage with you as a group and with you as individuals. Minister Kuleba and my dear colleague, Ambassador Shevchenko, have already thanked you profoundly for the work that you do in Canada and in Ukraine. Let me also hand over a big wad of thanks for all of your work. Over the past year, which has been nothing like what I would have expected, but that's another story, I cannot count the number of times people have thanked me for the assistance and support Canada provides. And when I hear their stories and I get into the details, I realize that they are talking about the diaspora's assistance and support. They are thanking you, and each time I wish you could be there to accept it. But I'm there and I do it humbly on your behalf, but I always give credit to our active, strong diaspora Ukrainian Canadians. And there are many more requests for more support and mentorship and assistance and moral support. In the last three days, the governor of Donetsk Oblast and the Narodny Deputat from Ternopil have both asked me how they might enhance cooperation with the diaspora. There are so many needs here, large and small, and I can assure you that despite some of the headlines that you might read, there are many things going well in this country that continues to face challenge after challenge. The embassy team and I are very focused on a number of these, COVID being the first. We are also dealing every week with interesting developments in politics and economics and international relations. And of course, this is still a country at war, with still partially and illegally occupied. I have been to the administrative crossing point in Kalanchak and looked over into Crimea. Just yesterday, I stood with President Zelensky at the zero point, the Nulove Punkt, at the newest crossing point in Luhansk. When I go th to these places, my goal is to project the care and concern and interest of all Canadians and to demonstrate that Canada is an unwavering partner. Every one of your works in this country backs that message up. Now, coming back to the UCC, I want to thank you and your leadership for your regular engagement with my colleagues in Ottawa, with Minister Champagne, and I invite you to reach out to me anytime. Not just Lesa and Ihor, but any or all of you. <laughs> and finally, a last thank you for your work as a force multiplier, as they say in the military. You know, while observing elections the other week, the director of one of the polls that I visited in Kyiv proudly told me that his role model in life is Dr. Oleg Antonishin. This young man is a resident in reconstruction surgery and has participated in a number of medical missions and is the type of person that also felt it his duty to take on stewardship of the democratic process in one small corner of the country. Likewise, I meet with the alumni of the Canada-Ukraine Parliamentary Program, and they tell me that their internship in Ottawa was life-changing. Today, they are lawmakers and ministers, they run NGOs and startups, and they are changing their world. These are just two reasons why, when asked about the Ukrainian-Canadian diaspora on the talk show The Week a few months ago, it was so easy for me to speak about your strength and determination and commitment to do good for Ukraine and for Canada. I wish you an excellent AGM and don't be strangers. Thank you.